According to Mises, human action is an ultimate given. To economic scientists, human action is the most primary phenomenon, and there is no use searching beyond it for one more fundamental. It is the subjective quality of human action with regard to establishing ends, making valuations and searching for means that makes economics an objective, universally valid science, though on the surface this may seem paradoxical. Austrians have expressed the discipline in purely formal terms, ends, means, value, cost, time and the laws and conclusions that follow are applicable to any human action, regardless of the sphere in which it is carried out. When the fledgling science of economics emerged and took its first steps, the discipline revolved around a historical ideal type, the Homo economicus. The Homo economicus was an abnormal being. He was a sort of Calvinist who carried around a little notebook. The only thing he cared about was making money. He would write down a pound, a shilling, another shilling, another shilling. He wanted to make money. He was like the Disney character Scrooge McDuck. Who remembers him? What did Scrooge McDuck used to do? Pile up all his coins and spend his time counting them. Well, that was the Homo economicus. So, the first theoretical formulations, especially in the English-speaking world among classical economists, who were quite disoriented, Adam Smith and his followers, who incidentally provided the basis for Marxism and the theory of exploitation and other grave errors, the first formulations showed a belief that the economy responded to robotic human beings beings like Scrooge McDuck, who were only motivated by financial concerns. Obviously, classical economists left themselves open to criticism in several areas, from any critic of the new science, because it is clear that human beings are motivated by more than money. Other ends, for example, altruistic ends, motivate them as well. It was not until the subjectivist revolution led by Karl Menger, the founder of the Austrian school, that the discovery came to light that economic science deals mainly with human actions, regardless of the ends pursued. Someone need only value these ends and seek out means to achieve them. It is precisely to call attention to this subjective nature, to the fact that the actor pursues ends chosen by him or her, and not by someone else from the outside, and the same for valuations, costs, etc. In fact, the discovery of this subjectivist conception of economics, the shift in focus of the entire discipline to the human actor, who drives the whole social process, is what transformed economics into a universally valid science. A science with objective validity in all spheres. As I was saying, it is precisely to call attention to this subjective nature that I offer as an example of an entrepreneur, it would be very easy to hold up Bill Gates or Henry Ford, I offer Mother Teresa of Calcutta. As you will see, she is a textbook example of an entrepreneur in the sphere she chose and valued that of helping the most needy, those who have been abandoned by everyone, the sphere of philanthropy. I will conclude with a philosophico-methodological reflection. Human action is an ultimate given, and many Austrian economists consider it an axiom, axiomatic knowledge, that is, a starting point we cannot criticize without contradicting ourselves. And in fact, it is an axiom. Let us imagine that one of you raises a hand and says, Professor, I don't agree with anything you've said. That bit about human action being the starting point of everything, an ultimate given, that's silly nonsense. Let us think a moment. What would a student who raised a hand and stated this objection be doing? He or she would be acting. The end pursued? To point out what he or she believes to be an error in my argument. The means, the student raises a hand, waits to be recognized, and then speaks. He or she is acting. Therefore, the student is incurring an unresolvable self-contradiction. Because he is criticizing something he himself must do in order to voice his criticism. The student is acting. 
That is why we consider human action to be axiomatic knowledge. However, others will say it is primarily empirical knowledge, since by introspection, despite the difficulties and the restraint of language, and despite the abstract nature of the knowledge we are discussing in class, all of us, as acting human beings, know perfectly well, firsthand, what is meant by ends, means, costs, time, etc. Thank you.